I'm going to talk about the quality component of the MIPS program. I will start by reviewing what is required for submitting data to CMS. Then I will discuss the various ways to report with examples of different measures available. I will review scoring and finally I will share some tips for success. Please note that I'm going to focus on the requirements for individual providers. As a reminder, the various components that make up the MIPS final score are quality, which is the heaviest weighted component at 60%, ACI, or advancing care information, which is 25%, improvement activities, which are 15%, and costs, which will be weighted at zero for 2017. It is important to note that your payment adjustment will be applied in 2019 based on your performance in 2017. During this presentation, I will focus on the quality component of MIPS. The quality component for MIPS is very similar to the previous PQRS requirements. All of the submission mechanisms were maintained, including Qualified Clinical Data Registry, or QCDR, Qualified Registry, EHR, and claims. And although this presentation focuses on individual providers, please note that CMS has maintained the web interface and caps for MIPS for group reporting options. In order to potentially earn the full 60% of the quality score, providers will need to report on a minimum of six measures, including one outcome measure or a high priority measure if an outcome measure is not available. High priority measures include appropriate use, patient experience, patient safety, efficiency, or care coordination measures. Providers will need to report on 50% of all patients, including all payers, for the QCDR, EHR, and Qualified Registry reporting options, and 50% of Medicare patients for the claims option. 2017 is a transition year, which means you can pick your pace of participation. To avoid the penalty, you can choose to report the minimum amount of data. For quality, the minimum could be one measure for just one patient. To potentially earn a positive adjustment, you can report at least six measures for 50% of your patient population for a minimum of 90 days, or to maximize your performance, report at least six measures for a full year. If you choose to do nothing, you will automatically receive a 4% penalty in 2019 based on your 2017 performance. Although the quality component of MIPS is very similar to the old PQRS program, a key difference is that your score will be determined by your performance on measures, not just the act of reporting. The types of measures providers can choose from are very similar to the former PQRS program. Surgeons can choose six measures from the full list of roughly 300 MIPS measures, or they can report six measures via a specialty-specific measure set. They can also identify an appropriate QCDR and report non-MIPS measures. For groups, the web interface and the CAPS for MIPS remain options. Here is an example of the general surgery specialty specific measure set. For those of you who have reported the PQRS general surgery measures group in the past, CMS has included measures from that group in this measure set. You will need to report a minimum of six measures or as many measures that apply if less than six. ACS offers options to help surgeons meet the MIPS requirements. The surgeon-specific registry currently has a QCDR for trauma measures and a qualified registry for reporting MIPS measures. ACS is also working to further expand the measure set to align with the MIPS program. The Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery Accreditation and Quality Improvement Program Registry also offers a QCDR for bariatric surgeons. Now, a little bit on how your score will be determined. CMS will give you between three to 10 points based on your performance compared to benchmarks. Again, 
This is very important to understand. Unlike PQRS, which gave you credit for simply reporting measures, MIPS determines your score based on your performance. There is also the option to earn bonus points by reporting additional outcome or high priority measures, as well as end-to-end -end electronic reporting using certified EHR technology. Bonus points are capped at 10% of the denominator. Failure to submit any data results in zero points. In conclusion, here are some tips to help you be successful in MIPS. Report on at least six measures and report as many outcome and high priority measures as you can in order to earn bonus points. Also, note that if you report more than six measures, CMS will apply the top performing measures to your score. Report for a time period that will result in reliable data or at least meet a 20 patient case minimum. In general, reporting for a longer period of time will allow you to track and improve your performance on the measure and will likely increase measure validity and reliability. Review your PQRS feedback reports. Understanding your PQRS measure reporting and past performance rates will help you determine the best strategy for MIPS in order to optimize your score. Utilize ACS resources, including ACS registries available for reporting MIPS. ACS is working to further align our registries with the MIPS program, so please continue to visit the ACS Quality Payment Program website for updates.